Now that we've got our database set up, there's a quick refresh. We have a database called XSchool and a table called Users. It contains the field ID, username, and password, with ID being auto incrementing primary key. From here, what we're going to do is we're now going to go to PHP, and then from there, we're going to connect to the database from our page. So, what we want to do is we want to go into the XAMPP folder. Go into your htdocs folder. Make sure that your server is up and running. And then from here, we're going to create, let's delete that. We're going to create a brand new file called index.php. So we can right click inside here, open with code. If you don't have the context menu for that, you can go file, open folder, and dig your way down to the htdocs folder. So inside our htdocs folder, we're going to create index.php. This is going to be the main page that loads up. We're then going to create a folder, and we're going to call this guy functions. And inside our functions, we're going to create a file called functions.php. The reason why we have this set up in this particular structure is so that we can have all of our PHP functions in one location. The exact same methodology is how we put all of our CSS into a singular style.css file. Now, to start this off, we want to put everything inside the PHP tags. Notice opening tag, closing tag. If you miss this, your entire system is going to fail. So the first thing we want to do here is create a function. Now, a function is basically a block of code that does something. When we write this, we want it to do one thing and one thing only. Now, in this case, I call this guy DB link. Next, I have to supply the details for what it is we're connecting to. So this dollar sign DB underscore user, this is going to be the username that we used, PHP, my admin. And then we're going to put in the dollar sign DB pass. This will be the password, which was password. Next, we're putting in the host, so we go DB host. And this was local host. And then we want to tell which database we want to connect to. So in this case, we're connecting to X school. Now, these are variables that hold that information. So this single equal sign means take the content from the right hand side, put it into a variable on the left hand side. And a variable is basically a bucket in memory which we can manipulate and change. Now, once we've got our variable set up, we want to do a try catch. So here we're basically telling the system that what we want it to do is we want to try the following commands. And if it doesn't work in our catch, what we want to do is we want to catch the exception and we'll put it out to a variable dollar sign E and then inform ourselves using an echo command and write it to the screen. So here we can say unable to access database, full stop, there it is, and then we get that. Now in our try section, what we want to do is we're going to dollar sign db is assigned a new PDO, so this is the PHP data objects version of accessing it. Put in some brackets, put a semicolon in, and then inside this, we want to go MySQL host. I'm going to go equals dollar sign, dollar sign db underscore host. Then we put in a semicolon, and we go db name equals dollar sign db. So this will, when it's being read by the system, will say MySQL localhost with the X school. And then from here, we're going to send through the username, db user, comma, dollar sign, db, pass. So this is the username and the password that we're sending to localhost to connect to this database. Now, once this has done its stuff, 
and assuming that it works, what we're going to do is we're going to throw in some error reporting. What this error reporting does is it literally hides any warning messages or notices that we have and um, the errors. So this gives us a clean page when we are using variables that we haven't defined yet. And then what we want to do at the end of the day is we want to basically return our DB connection. So here we're overriding DB with our DB connection. And this is what we're on. Now, this is part one to connecting to our page. What we want to do now is we want to link our index page to the functions. So inside here, PHP, we'll put in an include once, and then we're going into the functions folder. And inside the functions folder, we will find the functions.php file. Always remember to end your lines with a semicolon. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called DB Connect. And we're going to make it hold the output of DB Link. So if things are successful, we're returning something from the function. Not all functions are going to return information, but here we're returning it so we can collect it. And the reason we're doing that is we can now use an if statement. We go dollar sign db connect. We can then get then go echo. And we can say connection established. Now, this is a very simple web page. We've not done any HTML with anything like this. What we're expecting is when we would go to localhost, if the connection works properly, we should see this turn up on the page that we've got. So now let's go into our browser, come back to here. So we've rewritten this. Let's take this back down to localhost, hit enter, connection established. Now, this is good when we first test. What we really want to do is we want to put this into a HTML comment like this. So now this is hidden from the front page. So if we come into here, we do a refresh. Notice you can't see it, but if we right click view page source, we're informed in the actual code itself. And that is how we connect to a database.